Not all airplanes have Wi-Fi, although it's becoming more and more popular for airlines to install Wi-Fi onto their planes due to increasing demand. These, for example, are companies that have internet on board their planes. Depending on when you're watching this, it may be more or less correct. Anyway, even though you may see a company in this list, it doesn't mean that if you have a flight with them, you will necessarily have Wi-Fi available to you because of several reasons. 1. The route you're flying may have intermittent connection. 2. A plane that has internet capability may have broken Wi-Fi equipment for that flight. 3. Not all airplanes in a given company may have necessarily been equipped with internet access capability. You see, installing internet antennas means taking airplanes out of service for a while, which means the aircraft spends more time on the ground, which means the airline is losing money. Nevertheless, if you want to know if your flight has internet, there are different ways. You can either wait to get on board, take off, get above 10,000 feet, which is usually when the onboard internet is activated, and then you can check if there is Wi-Fi, and if there isn't, tough luck. This seems a bit old school though, and we don't really like it. Luckily, there is a website called Seat Guru that will help with this. Simply insert the airline, the date, and the flight number and you will be able to see a bunch of useful information, including if there is Wi-Fi on board. Is it fast? Well, usually airplane Wi-Fi is not very fast. As of today, providers claim, depending on the technology used, a range between 3 to 40 megabits per second theoretical speed. However, a much more real-life range is anywhere between 1 to 15 megabits per second. How does airplane Wi-Fi work? Well, there are two main technologies by which airplanes are able to connect to the internet. Towers on the ground and satellites. Let's look at the ground antennas first. This system, the first to be developed, works like the ground-based mobile data cellular network you're accustomed to through your cell phone. But unlike mobile towers that focus the signal downward, the towers meant to provide internet to planes project them upward. Antennas fitted under the belly of the plane receive the signal and send them to the onboard server. This server has a modem that converts radio frequency signals into signals that computers can understand. Then these signals are broadcasted to passengers through the Wi-Fi access points installed inside the aircraft. As the airplane moves forward, its antennas are able to quickly switch connection from the antennas it just passed with the next available one on the ground. Ground antennas have two main disadvantages. They operate on a lower frequency, which limits data speeds, and there are none above the sea. Thankfully, there is a solution to this, satellite internet. Instead of under the belly of the aircraft, antennas are installed on top of the plane. These antennas receive the signal from the satellites that are orbiting the Earth. But since both the satellite and the aircraft are moving at incredible speeds and are thousands of miles apart, the antennas need to constantly adjust the position to be able to receive the signals. This is why the satellite antenna dome is bigger than the ground-based antenna. It allows for rotation of the antenna inside a shell, which protects it from the high-speed air and the elements. There are two major advantages to satellite internet. One, it's available everywhere, and two, thanks to the higher frequency, it allows for way faster internet speeds. There are also drawbacks though. For one, it's more expensive, and two, the data has to travel a way longer distance which means even though the speed is faster, you will experience a more noticeable delay as you load web pages. This is an infographic showing how much further a signal has to travel to reach a satellite. How much does airplane Wi-Fi cost? It is very convenient as long as you would pay 5 million for this luxurious mansion. Prices vary a lot depending on the airline, but generally they are somewhere around $6 to $15 per hour, or $8 to $40 per 50 megabytes. Some airlines don't charge by the hour or by data consumed, but they rather provide packages that allow you to only use messaging apps for a fee or for a higher fee, even stream videos. Some others, like JetBlue, take a loss themselves by offering it for free to their passengers because they are aware that 67% of passengers would rebook with an airline if it had high quality Wi-Fi. 
and many airlines also give their high-tier customers complimentary access to maintain their loyalty. Generally, it can be somewhat expensive and this is due to various costs the airline faces such as ISP fees, cost of installing antennas, and costs of increased fuel consumption due to increased aerodynamic drag generated by the antennas, all of which are passed down to the end consumer. So even though the internet experience on board airplanes is not currently on par with mobile cell service or cabled home fiber or copper internet, the in-flight Wi-Fi industry is expected to grow to a $130 billion industry by 2035, and therefore we expect it to keep getting better.